So hello and thank you all for tuning back into part two of our Singapore Vacation Hermes story time and unboxing. If you haven't already checked out the first video, be sure to do so after watching this one. Now in part one, I go over my experiences shopping at six separate Hermes locations in two different countries and what I picked up in terms of non-bag items. So at each location, I decided to shoot my shot and ask about bag availability. So in this follow-up video, I want to share with you what I actually ended up going home with in terms of bags. I have two Hermes bags to unbox and I just want to walk you through my first impressions of each since I really haven't had an Enough time to use them. Plus, I was waiting to make this video until my bag organizers and accessories arrived, so now I can properly show you how I plan to use them in their full glory. Now, in my first video, I didn't specifically mention any specifications of any of the bags, including what I asked for, except for the Cavus tote, which was offered in one of the stores we went to. I mentioned it was actually offered in three different color options, which, by the way, when does that ever happen? But either way, the Cavus tote just was something that simply was not on my radar. Um, and I wasn't going to buy a bag just for the sake of buying one. I mean, I tried them on, and it just really wasn't my style. And I would have used it as a work tote and I have more work totes than there are work days in the week so it just really didn't make sense. Plus I've always felt that the canvas tote was a bit on the pricey side for a canvas bag and the H design is a little overwhelming for a bag that size so I did politely decline that tote. Now, if you were following along the timeline then you'll know that I actually didn't get contacted about a bag until the last full day of our trip. One of the essays that we worked with did say she would contact me if something that I wanted came available. I really didn't have high hopes for anything to come through, but as we were leaving the store that day, my husband said he had a good feeling about her. Um, now, throughout our time in Singapore, we did go to several luxury pre-loved consignment stores, and at one of those stores, I did see a bag that I wanted. And honestly, it's not a super popular one. Even in my conversations with essays, both in Singapore and in the US, it's just not a bag they get in very often. So towards the end of our trip, our last day actually, we decided that if um, that essay didn't contact us by then, maybe we could swing around to that consignment store to see if that bag was still there. So here we were on the last day of our trip. It's around lunchtime. You know, she still hasn't contacted us. She's probably not going to contact us. And I had budgeted enough for a non-quota bag. So why don't we just go to that consignment store, see if they still have the bag. And that's exactly what we did. So yes, one of the bags I picked up was pre-loved and it is the Halson 31 in a bean with white contrast stitching and a suede lining. Now the a bean color is not quite black. It's got a bit of smokiness, a bit of a brown hue to it. So I'm not sure if the camera can actually pick up the difference. I think it kind of does, but here we go. You can see that it's a much softer black than the noir color. Now honestly, I'm not sure why this bag doesn't get more love. I love the fact that it is extremely accessible with the top flap that's easy to move out of the way, and it's still secure when the flap is in place. I love the four external pockets, two in the front and two in the back. Um, those are perfect for quick phone access, for instance, and the fact that you can wear the strap at multiple lengths. The strap has a traditional prong buckle inside the bag with a series of notches, so you can make it as short as a shoulder bag and as long as a crossbody bag. Now you can wear it as a top handle bag as well, but I don't see me wearing it that way that often. I love how it looks at the shortest length, but only time will tell if that's the most functional length to access my things inside it. I can imagine that somewhere between a lower shoulder bag or a high crossbody bag would be the most functional for quick and easy access. I mean, it's such a low key, unassuming, sensible bag, and one that honestly fits my not so glamorous lifestyle when it comes to grocery shopping and just running errands. Now I picked up an organizer insert from Etsy just to give it a bit of shape and protection on the inside. And I'm really looking forward to using this bag. I'll do an actual review once I'm able to test her out and use her more consistently. So a brand new Halston 31 from Hermes would cost about five and a half thousand US dollars. And I picked this one up for approximately 3,400 US dollars. 
Though honestly, I am extremely happy to have found the Halton and life would have been good then and there. My husband had made an appointment at Dior later that day to pick up several items he saw earlier. And so after we bought the Halton, we grabbed a bite to eat and made our way to the Dior store. And we were having a great time in the store when out of the blue, my husband, who had my phone at that time, just looks down at it and gives me this look. And we've been married long enough that I just knew. Even before he said anything, I was like, that's Hermes, isn't it? That's Hermes saying that they have something, right? And he was just like, how did you know? Um, and I felt bad because, I mean, it did really take away the experience for us at Dior, but we were eager to get out of there to see what she actually had. And so I did feel kind of bad because we were having a really good time with the lovely essay that was helping us. And all of a sudden we were just like, it's been fun, but we got to go. <laughs> and so when we made our way to the store, the essay that helped us before greeted us. And I could tell she just had a smile on her face, even though she had a mask on. So she was like, I think you'll like this. And she pulls out a sealed box that has my name on it, like literally had a printout tag with my name on it. So considering we were at the location in less than an hour after she contacted us, I'm honestly taken aback by the effort she showed. And this is what she pulls out the Evelyn PM in gold with palladium hardware. Now in a previous video, I mentioned how I wasn't looking for the Evelyn TPM because I have a Longchamp bag that is near identical to it in terms of size, besides having a leather strap um, and a top zip closure. But the size of the PM was something that I had been low key considering. The funny thing about this bag is I think my husband likes it as much as I do, maybe even more. I wish I had a clip of him trying it on at the store. I mean, it's unisex looking enough with the thick canvas strap that it could easily be a men's messenger style bag. And even when he was trying it on at the store, like it honestly looked so good on him from what he was wearing that day. And he was getting compliments from the other essays as well, which was really funny. So I'm almost positive that if you see this bag in the future, I may not be the one wearing it. Um, for me, I probably wouldn't use it with the canvas strap as much depending on the occasion and what I'm wearing it with. With because overall it is a little bit on the masculine side it's a little bit on the casual side for my taste and frame most of the time now I definitely have and use men's bags in my collection so again that's not really saying much however I found this little strap on Etsy and I mean the colors is almost a perfect match um, but with this strap you can wear it as a shoulder bag I also picked up just a very simple bag liner since this is a Clemence leather and it is very, very soft. Um, and so that will just help to give it some shape and structure as well. And so wearing it as a shoulder bag, I absolutely love how it looks. I think this bag in the PM size makes a lot of sense, um, especially with the outer pocket. I think that's great for quick access items again. And I definitely see me using this when we travel because it's easy and flat enough to pack. And it's large enough for you when you're going to be out and about all day and need more than just your bare essentials, especially for those of you who have a partner or who have kids who like to load you up like a pack mule, then I think this is a really great bag. Again, I'll do a proper review of it once I've had more time to be able to test her out. But here's how she looks and she's gorgeous with that lining. So yes, I ended up buying two Hermes bags while on vacation, spending a total of approximately a little over $7,000 US on Hermes bags alone. Now, FYI, Singapore does do a tax refund, so at the airport I did get some of my money back, not just from Hermes, but some of our other luxury shopping ex as well. Um, I think the prices in Singapore are generally a little bit more expensive than in the US, but once you take that currency conversion into consideration along with the tax refund, it even out to paying a little bit above retail, but with no taxes. Now, before I sign off, I do hope you enjoyed this video, but there's just something I wanna to touch on. Um, did I feel guilty for buying two bags at once when I had originally planned to buy one? Yes, I did. Um, for me, these types of shopping habits are just not sustainable and not financially healthy for the long run. And I mean, YouTube is this weird, wonderful, double-edged sword, right? On one hand, it's a great space for people to live vicariously through others but it can also be detrimental and can lead to feelings of like FOMO or jealousy, frustration, and eventually poor financial decisions, especially for those of us who like to watch luxury videos. Um, at the same time, YouTube is a wonderful place to inspire and to educate. 
And I guess I want to be more cognizant of what type of content I'm posting so no one gets the wrong idea that this is the type of shopping that is something to aspire to. I know everyone has different experiences at Hermes, so I suppose I just wanted to throw mine in the mix in case someone finds this helpful. I feel like I've gotten pretty lucky with bags from the boutique, um, and I'll never buy anything that I didn't want in the first place. The problem is there's a lot of stuff that I actually really, really like. Um, and obviously I have yet to get a quota bag offer from the store because as some of you know, I don't live near an Hermes, so the only time I do get to shop is while on vacation. However, it seems like January is a great time to start asking for bags now that the Christmas season is over. So let me know if you are planning on trying your luck as well. I know I've posted a lot of Hermes videos and will probably continue to post about Hermes, even if it's purely from a business or a consumer standpoint and not unboxing after unboxing since I won't be traveling again anytime soon. And that being said, I look forward to sharing more non-Hermes videos with you as well, just because I know times are looking tough this upcoming year for a lot of people. And not only do I personally feel like I'm going to soon be priced out of certain brands, I do want to practice is what I preach when it comes to mindful consumption. And there's both plenty of amazing non Hermes items out there that are much more wallet friendly. And chances are there's also plenty of amazing stuff you already have in your closet that we can gain a new appreciation for. And so while I'm currently over this concept of an Hermes journey per se for now, I'll explain more in an upcoming video, but in essence, buying another Hermes bag anytime soon is simply not a goal I have for this upcoming year, only because I have other goals in mind that take precedence. And I also plan to be opening up to you about my current luxury collection, as well as my debt and finances, um, because they kind of go hand in hand. You can't really have one without it affecting the other. And all of this from the perspective of someone who is still considered young in her career and who is battling lifestyle creep. I mean, in a matter of one year, my husband and I both pretty much quadrupled our earning power, which, which is a lot for anyone to handle. And I'll share about that in an upcoming video if that's something that you, you're interested in. Um, and lifestyle creep is a hard battle when you unfortunately have a taste for expensive things. So I hope that's content you wouldn't mind watching. And I sincerely hope to see you again in my next video.